Hey everyone, Matt here from Docs Running. Today we're gonna to do an extended discussion on preparing your body for super shoes and an ongoing discussion about training in them. So we've talked extensively about how, you know, these are really awesome shoes. We're still not exactly sure how they're affecting our bodies just because the literature doesn't, is having trouble keeping up on that. There are some early reviews and early, early bits of research talking about, hey, there are some kinematic changes and sometimes there aren't. You know, we have caution going, it might not be the best idea to train in this stuff all the time, just because again, it feels awesome, it's super fun. And even though it does tend to make us a little like, less sore the next day or next week, you have to be aware that is there are it's changing some patterns of loading and forces. You know, there's the super foams in here, you might have less loading depending on who you're talking to, to but it might increase pressure into certain things like muscles. Like we've seen an increase in hamstring injuries with some of these because of the rockers and the foams and stuff like that. But the challenge with making that comment is now we're starting to see these same foams and designs go into training shoes. So people are asking us, well, you know, you said don't train in this stuff all the time, but now we have super trainers. Now we have some of the same foams going into normal trainers. What do we do? So I'm going to be honest that it's, I think it's time to have a good discussion on this. And like most technologies, eventually it seeps into everything else. And so that the question becomes, do we train full time in this? And I think, again, it goes back to, it's good to have some variety. These foams are awesome. I love this stuff. I love the Audios Pro 3. I used to train in the original Audios uh, Boost, and I used that as daily training. I was running 100 miles a week in it. I used to race, run in racing flats all the time. There were some changes. There were some injury risks that I had to put up with, but it was super fun. And so I think that's kind of where we have to go. And I apologize for saying, hey, you probably shouldn't train full time in this, but now I'm going to have to eat those words because that's what everything out there is. I do think if you're going to race in them, especially for long distances, you do need to prep your body by doing long runs in them. So I think that's where a shoe definitely like the Adios Pro 3 comes in. I have done plenty of long runs in this shoe and really enjoyed it. The foam is nice. It doesn't feel crazy bouncy. And I'm going to be honest that there are some shoes I am legitimately afraid to train in. And the reason I'm afraid to train in them is because the foams feel so good, they ruin other shoes where I have a great run in them. And then I go to put on one of my trainers and I'm like, oh, this is heavy. It's not as responsive. So I think that's where that comment comes from for me personally. But from a training perspective, yeah, you know, it, oftentimes I think if you are in control of your pace and you know what you're doing, then it's fine. If you're the kind of person that as soon as you put these on, you're going to go run all out, then that's probably not the best tool for you to use. And that goes into the fact that these are tools. If you're using them appropriately, you're going to be fine, right? And I, I want to go back to that. If you can go do your long run at a pace where you're not running too hard, not going to overtrain, then you're fine. But if you, if you put this on and now your long run becomes a race or your easy run becomes a race, then yeah, you probably shouldn't be wearing these. But if you can control that, then definitely because at the end of the day, these shoes are new. They are different. They're different than what we've experienced for years. Many people that have now grown up with this stuff, you know, that just got it running when it came out. Yeah, you're going to be used to it. You, you've you been exposed to it. But often many people have it. We forget in, in running, like for those of us that run a ton or been running for a while, that a lot of the newer runners coming in haven't been exposed to this kind of thing. And I'm going to still stand with what they said. I don't think newer runners should be doing all their runs in a shoe like this. I think they need to get a normal daily trainer and they need to just get used to the demands of running before you start adding plates and all this other crazy stuff on there because this adds an additional element. I'm not saying it's bad, but this additional variable can throw some extra things in there and potentially make it a little easier to run too hard on your easy run or what have you and potentially predispose you to training. If you're someone that is training really hard and you're going to use this strategically to try to reduce your soreness so you can train, but you also know to recover, then that's a different story. But that again goes into what about the super trainers, which that's another thing. If you're going to be using those super trainers and you're balancing them with this stuff, then you're probably going to be fine. Just know that after training in this stuff for the super trainers, if you go back to a normal shoe, it might not have the same balance and pleasantness that you once had. And that's just how it goes. And as long as you take time to transition, if you get your body used to this stuff, then you're going to be fine. You just need to make sure that you give your body time to adapt to this stuff. Yes, these feel great. Yes, it feels very easy to run in them. But you have to realize you are stressing some tissues that aren't used to working in this way. 
these shoes, the rockers, the plates, the foams, they tend to extend your stride. They tend to make you kind of work in areas and stretch out tissues and work tissues that you may have not worked in that range before, which may feel great initially, but also if you're starting to do too much, because you're like, oh, I don't have to worry, I'm not as sore as previously, you can still injure things. So that's why I'm gonna go into this little discussion that I thought might be worth it of going, how can you prepare your body to run in shoe types like this, right? You know, um, I think one of the things you gotta think about is what are the characteristics of the shoe? So part one, these shoes are really often stiff. They have plates, they have rods, they have kind of unique geometries that maybe people aren't used to. They can exaggerate motion. So, you know, while a shoe like the Audios Pro 3, if you pick up the pace, will definitely lengthen your stride. Something like the Fast R, it's unique mechanics. It's gonna pitch your knee forward really quick. It's got this great gearing mechanism, but that means it's shoving your knee forward and pulling your heel up really quick, which means those tissues, the patella femoral, so the, the patellar tendon and the kneecap, they need to get used to going forward really quickly. You need to work on your calf strength to tolerate that pitch forward, because if not, that's gonna overstretch that tissue. And if you overtrain that, may contribute to an injury, right? If you are fine, you listen to your body, you might be fine. But there are, are some things you can do to prep for that. So in terms of the stiffness, there's also the softness of the foams. The shoes have gotten softer and softer and softer in recent years. I, I remember, you know, shoes, when I started running in the early 2000s, shoes were firm. They were stiff very firm. They had these blocks of EVA, had very traditional heel drops, so 10 to 12 millimeters. Now you have a shoe with a variety of heel drops, you eight, you know, six millimeter you, that sometimes feels lower depending on where you land because the foam's compressed so much. So you got to worry about Achilles length. You got to worry about foot stability, even though a lot of these shoes are often now becoming more stable. The Audios Pro 3 is kind of one of my top stable neutral racing shoes just because of sole flare, the, the way it's set up. But that said, the shoes are still soft. So you still need to prep your body for handling less stable surfaces. And how would you do that? So we're actually gonna start from the end of this and then go back. So you've got a couple options. One of the biggest things I would suggest is getting used to being on unstable surfaces. So an Airx pad or one of these softer foam pads is a great option to work on something as simple as single leg balance. And again, do you need to make this part of your specific workout routine? No, you can get one of these and put it in the bathroom and do single leg balances on these while you're brushing your teeth, right? Just integrate it into your day. But I would suggest working on balancing on unstable surfaces because you need to get your foot, feet used, foot, well, it's all everything, your feet, knees, hips, used to kind of that unstable surface. And you don't need to do three sets of 10, That don't do that. You need to work on your endurance. Unless you're a sprinter, you are gonna be running for longer periods. So you wanna go for longer reps. You wanna be doing a minute, maybe even two minutes, a couple reps of that on each side, getting your body used to handling being on a softer surface. The other group, this is off topic, that I would really, actually kind of on topic, that I'd really encourage to think about this is trail runners. You got a lot of ankle sprains, a lot of instability and, and stability issues on these softer surfaces. This is a great thing to add in. It's super simple. You can use it and work on your balance on others on while you're doing other things, which is the greatest thing. But some unstable surface training is gonna be really helpful for getting your entire lower extremity and your pelvis and your core used to being on these unstable shoes because they feel really sexy and bouncy initially. But when you're at 20 miles into a race and that softness and bouncy is starting to work against you, that's where something like this might help you because you gotta have this stability throughout the limb, not just at the foot and ankle to handle this stuff. A great example of where I talked about this was with the Fuel Cell RC Elite 2 from New Balance, where it was really fun, it was a great shoe, but it was so soft, it made my knee and hip work that much harder because it was so soft. And so that's, again, it felt nice and bouncy. My ankle was actually pretty decent, but everything else kind of got work because it was such a softer surface. So having a foam pad, which these are a couple bucks on Amazon, would be really helpful. Now, just to make sure, because a lot of people don't seem to know this, Doing this won't increase your strength. There's been plenty of research that shows that adding unstable surface training does not increase your strength more. You actually might have to back your strength training. If you're gonna use this with strength training, single leg squats, lunges, if you're gonna use this, you need to back the weight off because this is training a different system. It's training your proprioceptive system, your, your stability system, which is not necessarily gonna improve your ability to put out force, right? Strength, power is how much force you can produce, how quickly you can produce it. This is how much you can, how you can stabilize. So please be aware of what you're training. Don't go, oh, I'm using the foam bat to increase my strength. You're increasing your stability. 
okay? So again, a great tool, just make sure you know what you are training, okay? And then put that in there. Another option for a couple shoes, and what I, I'm gonna really encourage this is because of the stiffness and lower drop, people assume with the rockers that it's always gonna take pressure off your calves. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. There's a lot of other factors that go into the rocker, right? How aggressive is the rocker? How stiff is the plate? Is it lining up with your first toe, which is really important? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And then again, the lower drop. The Alpha Fly is a great example. Not the Alpha Fly 2, because I haven't, we haven't seen enough patience with it yet. But the Alpha Fly 1 is a great example because it was a four millimeter drop. And most people, when they landed on it, would end up going into a zero drop shoe. So people were going, this is a rockered shoe. Why am I having Achilles issues? Why am I having a cash stiff issues? Because when you're landing on that soft foam, you're creating a zero drop shoe, which puts a lot more pressure, even if it's rockered, puts a lot more pressure into your Achilles, into your calf, because you've got to pull out of that, and especially into a longer race when that's starting to fatigue, that gets more difficult to get out of that low drop. So like any runner, I would, t t uh, I would hope and encourage you to work on calf raises, something really simple. And to be honest with you, if you can work on calf raises, start on a level surface and just, you gotta work on getting up high. I see way too many patients that are like, I have plenty of strong calves, I do calf raises. And they go like, uh, uh. Full range of motion, you wanna work that full range. This is gonna lengthen your stride. It, different people, some of the research can show this might vary. We, people don't tend to use as much dorsiflexion with these, but sometimes they'll use more plantar flexion because really pushing off. Using that range means you need to prep your body for that. Should, can you do body weight calf raises and get full range first? Yeah, I think that would be great. Eventually, you should think about two things. One, getting on a step and working on full, getting into a little bit negative, because again, when you're in stance phase, i.e. when your foot's on the ground and you pull back here, you are going into, a, into you know those higher levels of dorsiflexion with the calf. So getting it, doing some like negative, whatever you call it, negative drop heel, not negative drop, but like negatives for heels, right? Go through extra range of motion. That's gonna be really good to prep your calves to handle kind of what ends up happening is running and faster in this kind of footwear. And in general, the calves are the number one propulsive muscles for running. Therefore, you should take care of them. You should be doing straight leg. And, but actually probably the more important one based on my research into Achilles and tendinopathy, bent knee calf raises are probably the most important because the soleus tends to be that single joint, really important muscle for both handling some of the forces with running as well as propelling you off. So making sure you do step, full range of motion working into this, full range of motion, bent knee calf raises will be really helpful to help your calves be able to handle the range of motion the shoe might take them into. Yes, the rockers can take some pressure off the ankle. They can be really helpful, but when you're talking about adding in plates and these unstable foams, some of that might kind of go out the window. So that's why, again, after unstable surface training, you should, whether you're running in these or not, you definitely should be working on calf raises. But for if you're running in these kind of shoes, especially with some of the variable drops, getting into working on calf raises with the step would be really important. Um, I would not do both the, the step calf raises and weights at the same time, like adding a weight on top of it. But eventually, again, with strength training, you should really think about slowly starting to up the weight. You don't have to be psycho like me and, and, and buy 50 pound, 75 and 100 pound kettlebells but you should eventually think about adding a little bit of weight onto that as soon as you've gotten used to stuff, you know, just because you want to prep your body for the load that's going to produce because these shoes are fun to run fast in. And that's why you have to be so careful when you put these on of going, are you going to stay true to your pace of the pace you're supposed to run or keeping it easy? Or are you going to take off way faster than you're supposed to? And yeah, so these won't prevent an injury, but they certainly can help you, you know, potentially reduce some of the stress and maybe, I don't know if that's even true, maybe make you feel less sore, which can be dangerous because then you think you can run faster and your body maybe hasn't recovered. So that's a little tangent again. So again, unstable surface stuff, just getting your body used to some of the instability of some of these shoes. Calf raises are going to be really important. And probably the last thing, which is the easiest, is just doing some single leg squats. And now, why do I suggest doing single leg squats? Because running is a series of single leg squats, right? And for a shoe like this, like the Fast R, which again, the gearing mechanism really pitches my knee for it. it I've had some patellofemoral, some kneecap issues running in this shoe. Generally, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm very fortunate that I trained a really high level and I, my degree and my profession is very good at picking this stuff really up really quick so I know what to do. 
but certain shoes are going to exacerbate certain mechanics. So the two areas that I have noticed that I referenced earlier is hamstring and a little bit of knee. Why is that? Because these shoes tend to take pressure off the ankle and make, again, especially with the soft and the gearing mechanisms, they put it more work into the knee and the hip. So, and they tend to lengthen your stride. So the hamstrings aren't quite you sometimes to going that far back and then they've got to pull you out and get your leg prepped for swinging back during swing phase but also some of the how quick they pitch you forward like this shoe your knee might not be used to going that far forwards right so having single leg squats or single leg deadlifts are two great exercises that i really like because they both prep your hamstrings as well as your quads knee and hip for handling this stuff you should not be afraid to let your knee go a little farther forward. I know there's different opinions on that for like the knees forward to toes thing and the knees forward to toes guy. If your kneecap and your hip will let you go there, you should gently train into that position. And you should think about once you've gotten your form down, you can keep a nice neutral straight knee and hip as you go down. You should think about starting to add some weight. Why is that? Because you're gonna be generating more force whether you want to or not, trying to drive through this, right? And trying to run faster. So adding some strength training and doing single leg squats and single leg deadlifts would be really helpful. Could you also do that on a foam pad? Yeah. If you're doing that on a foam pad, just realize that you are working on your stability and you might have to decrease the strength a little bit so you don't strain anything. If you want to work on pure strength, get the foam pad out of there and do a separate session of doing higher load, right? So doing weight, and you should definitely eventually work up to doing weighted stuff. Cause like, I'm, like I said, strength training is one of the few things you can do that we've seen can actually decrease your injury risk because it preps your body to handle higher loads. So definitely in shoes like this, single leg squats, single leg deadlifts, prepping your quads and hamstrings, going down, kind of work on a range of motion. Don't worry about weight first, get the range of motion first to prep your body through what it's, what it's gonna go through, you know, going how far down can you go? How far can you squat? But keep good mechanics. So that's kind of my thing on prepping the body for doing this stuff is again, working on stability, working on calf strength and range of motion, and then definitely working on knee and hip strength and going through a range of motion, which honestly, isn't really that different from just running in general. I'm just gonna encourage you to do that stuff more because these shoes are really fun. It's really run, fun to run fast in them. It's fun to run fast in them when you're not supposed to because it's like, oh, I'm not gonna be, you know, I'm gonna be safe from this. That's not necessarily true. You know, the, the foams are very unstable. Oftentimes muscles get work that you don't expect or not used to, especially when you're supposed to be covering and you pick up the pace too much. So again, I would really encourage you to give your body some time and do some other things. Running is one of those sports where people generally use running to get in shape, but you should really be in shape to run. And that means that there are some things you're gonna do. You need to work on some strength training. You need to work on some mobility stuff. Do you have to spend an hour every day? No, some of the elite runners do it. But those of us who have full-time jobs or are professional, you know, you know, we don't always have time for that level, but you gotta get at least a little bit. So I, again, would suggest four things, actually five. And I know I've mentioned this multiple times, but I do the same thing with my patients and my students. Repetition tends to help people remember this better. A little unstable surface training if you're gonna run in these. Work on your calves, especially for like single leg, like single leg uh, heel raises off a step. Work on that range of motion. Work on that strength of the range of motion. And same thing for single leg squats and single leg deadlifts. The fifth thing I would tell you is ease into these shoes. If you've never run in this shoe type before, I'd really encourage you not to just jump in and go, you know what? I've never done anything more than a couple of miles in this. I'm gonna suddenly jump into doing my long run in this shoe. I wouldn't encourage that because even though they're fun and people are going, oh, I feel less sore in them. It's the, you know, we don't know if this is decreasing injury risk. I would guarantee you it's probably just changing the injury types rather than decreasing injury risk because no matter what footwear we've created over the last 50, 60, 70 years, our injury rates actually haven't changed. The types change depending on what time of what time we're talking about. So again, you should take time. It's, it's a new thing. Any new thing you should give your body time to adapt to. And that's the same thing with some of these new sexy super trainers. You should take ease your body into it. Yes, it feels fun, but if you wanna stay healthy and be consistent, ease your way into this stuff. And I, I'm still gonna say that. I'm not saying you shouldn't do long runs in this. I'm actually saying you should do long runs in these if you're going to be doing half marathon, marathon um, runs in them. You should get your body used to it. Just take your time and give your body, get your body used to the stress it's gonna be 
uh, that's going to be placed upon it. And don't assume this is free energy. There is no such thing as free energy. These, when people say energy return, it's, it means it's maintaining it. It doesn't mean it's giving you back extra. It means it's maintaining more of the force you put in the ground where that force might be going. That's why you got to be a little careful. And again, I'm not trying to scare people away from this. I'm saying just like running, if you're going to run in them, there's some things you should probably be working on. I hope that was helpful. This is something I've been thinking about a lot and just kind of ex ex exploring my thoughts and hoping throughout this is helps. And that's why we have this website is trying to help people as we learn, trying to go, how do we keep people healthier? How do we keep people running better? And how do we help people learn about the stuff that they're putting on their feet? Because we geek out about this and hopefully we can get you a little more passionate and help you geek out a little bit about it too.